From Willard Stadium in High Point, it's another non-conference test for the Panthers. This time, it's Wake Forest coming to town for a midweek matchup. Good evening, everyone. Alongside Thomas Hart, I'm Harris Eisenberg. Thomas, High Point's non-conference schedule has all been about testing this Panthers team. They passed a big test by winning a series against Northeastern this past weekend, and now the Demon Deacons come to town, and Parker Dean has a tough task on his hands tonight. It is a perfect day for baseball here at Willard Stadium, a perfect day to decide a three-game set between the High Point Panthers and the Northeastern Huskies in a non-conference matchup. Good afternoon, everyone. Alongside Garrett Escala, I'm Harris Eisenberg. Tales of two teams. Friday, High Point looked like the better team. Saturday, Northeastern looked like they had the edge. Who's going to get the series win here this afternoon? Changes for High Point, though. Sam Garcia, their typical Sunday starter, not on the bump. It'll be Sean Duffy who gets the call instead. After two straight shutout wins, the High Point Panthers look for the sweep this afternoon over the College Charleston Cougars. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Harris Eisenberg. The story of the series has been the High Point pitching, holding the Cougar Bats to just nine hits over the first two games. They'll look to continue that success, starting with David Keith on the mound today for High Point. One, two. Hit off of Duffy and to the left of Sing Sang. Gets it. Quick throw. Got him. An unconventional ground out to start the fourth here for Sean Duffy. He is 0 for 2 so far. And he swings and chops one to the left side. Tough play for Stewart. Running throw. Got him. Here it comes. And he rips it to left field. That's a base hit. And it's rolling all the way to the wall. Sing Sang's going to score, and Javon Fields has driven in both runs for the Panthers, and High Point leads 2-1. to one. Has to fight out of an 0-2 count here, and he swings and hits it to the left side, a base hit. Stewart's going to score, Ebert around third, he's going to score with no throw. Josh DeLauriers comes through for High Point, and the Panthers lead 3-2. to two. And Amato drives one to right center field, and that's going to get down in the gap. Cars going to easily score. Let's see what they do with Klingler. They're going to send him home. The relay throw's going to go to third, and this game is tied. Amato with a two-run double, and he knots it up at four. Klingler has been so good for the Panthers since he's been inserted into the lineup, looking for probably the biggest hit of his career. A one. Swung on, hit to right center, it's down for a base hit. Melton's going to score. Charlie Klingler comes in clutch, and the Panthers have their first lead of the ball game. Uh, Preston Hall on deck for Charleston, hoping for a turn. Garcia looking to end it right here. Here's the 1-2. Strike three called, and the ball game is over. Sam Garcia powers a fastball by Tanner Steffi. And the Panthers, for the first time in over two years, get a shutout victory today over the College of Charleston Cougars. The eighth, no walks. Michael Tolson and now Sean Gibbons have combined for three walks here in the ninth. 2-1. Chopped slowly to third. Wilkinson cuts it off the running throw. In time, the ball game is over. As much as you can bend them, the Lancers bend, but they do not break. And Longwood survives and takes game one here in high point. And he drives one in the air to deep left field. Going back is to Laurier's, and he watches it fly on out of here. First batter of the game, and Mike Sorota leaves the yard. And Northeastern strikes quick as they lead one to nothing. That comes with having good at-bats, and... Pitchers filling the strike zone. 1-1 one, one is driven in the air to deep right field, and Harrow will watch it fly on out of here. Sam Zajacek gets in on the home run party in this one. It's his fourth home run of the season, and the Panthers cut the Campbell lead to 3-2. To First pitch to Blake. Swung on and driven in the air to deep right field, and Harrow will watch it fly on out of here. Oh, Sutton over the scoreboard has made it a one-run ball game. Oh, with two outs. And that one hit up the middle, and that's a base hit. Tavares is going to round third. He's going to score without a throw. Pittsburgh is pouring it on. Seven He's runs here in the fifth, and they lead seven to three. And that one in the air to deep left field, and Bennett has tied this game. 
So High Point had back-to-back -back home runs in the fourth, and the Deeks respond with back-to-back -back home runs of their own, and were tied at seven. on the right side for him, and it's taken upstairs. Count 1-0. Oh. Yeah, not only just the infield, you've got this shortstop standing, you know, pretty much level with a, uh, with a motto there where he's kind of standing on that leadoff spot, but also your outfield shifted just a hair right. He is going to ground it left. Golub got away with a hanging breaking ball as it's dug out by Reinich for the first out. Cole Singh said, coming into tonight, by the way, over his last seven games, is hitting 360 with three home runs and seven RBIs. So he that continues good? his hot streak. I, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good stat line in terms of hitting. So now here's Blake Sutton, who's having a really productive night. Two for two, single and a home run. His home run tied the game in the fourth. And what I forgot to touch on was, I believe that home run either went right up by the lights of that pole in right field or over the light pole. We have had I thought it was going to hit the lights. I, w I was waiting to hear it hit off the light. You're, I think it snuck just short of it, but yeah, it was, I, I mean, I thought for a second there, it was, it was right on the lights. Again, if you're just joining us, seven home runs in this game, five from Wake Forest and two from High Point, as we are tied at seven. Here, one out, bottom of the fifth, runner on second for high point, and Sutton in the hole, nothing and two. Sutton, redshirt sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky, coming into tonight is a 242 hitter. That breaking ball is outside, one and two. Sutton got a little bit of a break this weekend after catching back to back midweek games for Joey Hammond, something Sutton normally doesn't do. He normally doesn't catch Blake during the midweek, so he got. The night off on Saturday in favor of Easton LaPlaca. This game number 40 for Sutton on the year. He'll see a 1-2. And it's spiked in front. Amato's going a third to throw in plenty of time. And he's out. Great awareness from Gio Cueto to nab Amato at third. And that is a big second out for Wake Forest. I think just that wild pitch. Still a great block behind the plate by Cueto. You see this one right here. You just instantly think in that situation you're getting the wild pitch, but that was just a rocket of a throw, and he was out with no doubt about it. That is now the 11th time a Panther has been caught stealing this season. They are now 40 for 51. Two and two pitch, and that one fouled off. How about Gio Cueto, backup catcher for Wake Forest, getting the start here tonight and throwing out a runner. That's always huge, especially for a guy who's looking for as many opportunities as possible to get behind the dish. And that's an impressively good block. That ball hits even before the batter's box. And like we've talked about this turf, it can kind of bounce anywhere with the way this turf has played this season. Gets behind it, grounds it, fields the ball, and still able to get that out at third. Three and two, the count now to Sutton. And here's the payoff. And it's swung on and missed strike three. Huge strikeout for Gabe Gallup. Keeps this game knotted at seven through five here on ESPN+. Plus. Reed Vire, next man up for the Panthers out of the pen. And he inherits a runner on. Nobody out here in the top of the six at a 7-7 ball game. Harris Eisenberg, Thomas Hart here with you. Treated to an absolute offensive slug match here in High Point. And it's Vire's opportunity to tame the Deacon bats. Yeah, these are always fun games to watch when you've got the bats are hot. You know, you've had some great defensive plays on both sides. You know, also some defensive errors on one side. So this is a fun game. We're only in the sixth. We've got a lot of baseball left. Reed Fire making his 18th appearance of the season. 27 innings pitched, 48 hits, 25 earned runs, 7 walks, 22 strikeouts. An 8-3-3 ERA and a 403 opponent batting average, but that really doesn't tell you the story for Reed Vire. You know, this is a guy who always comes into games in big situations. He always inherits a lot of runners that aren't his, and it kind of just blows up on him. And, you know, on Friday, he pitched the last three innings of that ball game in relief of Carter Shepard, and he had his best outing of the season, retiring all nine he faced in the Panthers' 10-4 win over Northeastern. And you want to talk about feeling good coming into a game. I don't think there's anyone that can feel better than Reed Fryer right now. I mean, like you said, putting nine guys in a row out, the only nine you face all day, 
It's a good way to feel. Could be two sink sink. The turn, double play. Welcome to the game, Reed Vire. Huge double play. He gets the defense to roll up, and there's quickly two outs here in the sixth. Right on cue, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still in the middle of talking about it. He couldn't have waited five more seconds until, you know, he gets it done. Let's see right here. A hard hit ball. Stewart, good field, and just a good transition. That's a, that's a routine 6-4-3 every single time. So Tommy Hawk, who hit a home run to right center field this last time, up one for three. And Vire delivers a called strike, nothing in one. Joey Hammond saying he was very proud of Reed for his performance on Friday's best outing of the season. Said he came in sharp with both pitches working for strikes. And the biggest thing, like I mentioned at the beginning of the ball game, he attacked. And, you know, that's something that this pitching staff, you know, guys like Miles Miller and Gavin Wayman have stressed to the pitching staff. You have to attack the strike zone. You can't be afraid. Like I said earlier, if they hit it, they hit it. Great. But as long as they're in the strike zone, there's really not much you can complain about. You can't you can't give them free bases. And that's what we've talked about all game. Wake Forest is really, really good at, and they've only had high points, only given up one walk or I guess two walks today. So a very impressive outing by high points. Grounded to short, running throw by Stewart, and that retires the side. So Vire only needs to throw five pitches to get three and outs. 7-7 seven, seven here on ESPN+. Plus. Beautiful Sunday here at Willard.